we come to magnify him and give him the highest praise. To give him every hallelujah, give him the highest praise, hallelujah. And we worship him because he is king of kings and lord of lords. He is the greatest power. He is the greatest power. And so we lift him up and we sing his praises and declare that he has won the victory and declare because he's victorious, we're victorious. Because he has all power, he has given us the power. And we celebrate that and we walk in that and we thank him for the sacrifice that he has made for us. By his stripes, we are healed. By his nail-pierced hands, we Strikes, we are here. 
and praise the Lord, Life Center. I am so glad to be before you today. I'm Minister Timothy, for those who don't know, and welcome to Worship and the Word. Uh, we're gonna get right into it tonight. We're not gonna hold you that long. Um, but I, I will say this, I am honored to be before you. It's always a privilege and an honor to have a, a chance and an opportunity. You're gonna hear that word uh, often here, an opportunity to share God's word, to teach you God's word. So uh, without further ado, um, we're gonna open up with a word of prayer. Uh, there's so much to pray for. As you know, we're still battling this COVID-19, uh, but we believe that uh, God does all things well he, he, he doesn't fail. He doesn't make any mistakes. He knows what he's doing. And so it is crucial and critical that in this, in this uh, time that we're living in, that we learn to put our trust and cast our cares on him and trust him and take him at his word. With that, with that said, uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you tonight. We bless you. We honor you, O Lord, Father, for this lesson. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the hearts and, and the minds and the souls of your people who will hear and digest and, and, and take this word, Lord God, this lesson. I pray, Lord God, that, it, that as it is broken down and explained to them, that, Father, Lord God, they are able to apply it to their lives so that they may be effective. Father, now to all those, Lord God, who are your children, your, your, your beloved, your called, Father, who may be going through tests or trials, Lord God, those who may have lost loved ones or be, or, or be sick and afflicted in their bodies, Father, we pray for comfort. We pray for healing right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, I decrease that you may increase the more. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so tonight we're talking about spiritual confidence. Spiritual confidence. It's one thing to have self-confidence. Uh, you've heard that a lot. It's one thing to be confident in one's own ability, but it's another thing to have spiritual confidence. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Grab your Bibles and run over to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, beginning with uh, verse 1 through verse 14. And we're dealing with Peter here, Peter and John. In Acts chapter 4, uh, we basically have, have uh, experienced Pentecost chapter 2, and um, so we're going to deal with chapter 4 here and a little bit with chapter 3. When you have it, type amen. All right, let's begin. And I'm reading from the uh, New King James Version, uh, but no matter what version you have, it all should work together. So let's read now. As they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day. For it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Cephas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means, by what means he has been made well? Let it be known to you, let it be known to you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which, was, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the men who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. So, the big picture here is that you don't have to be the most educated. 
You don't have to be the most talented to boldly proclaim the word of God. You don't. Now, this takes nothing away from anyone who goes to school, who, who is a scholar, and, and they get their degrees and educations. It takes, it takes nothing away from them. But what we're dealing with tonight, as it pertains to spiritual confidence, I'm letting you know tonight that after we go through the material, you're going to understand and see how this works to where it's not solely dependent upon your own natural ability. It's in chapter 3 here that the Bible tells us that on one day after Pentecost, uh, when Peter and John were going to the temple at the time of prayer, which was the ninth hour, that they were confronted by a beggar. This beggar was crippled since birth, and he asked, him, he asked them for money. However, according to the Bible, they gave him something far better. Let's go to chapter 3 of Acts, beginning with verse number 6, because this is where we find out uh, uh, where everything starts that leads up to Peter and John uh, being uh, taken and, and, and put into custody in chapter 4. All right? Verse 6 says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. I have two main points for you tonight. That, that's really it. I have two main points tonight. And I believe these two main points are going to help you be better spiritual, or I'm sorry, be, be more spiritually confident. Amen? Two points. The first point that we need to understand, that we need to have put into practice, that we need to make a part of our lifestyle is understanding how to seize any opportunity to preach the word of God, to preach the gospel. Why is that? Because this is the only way that we can build our spiritual confidence. Peter does this, and he does it in verse 11 in chapter 3. Let's go there real quickly. Verse 11, chapter 3 of, of the book of Acts. And it reads, Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this, or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk. Look, this was the same place. If, if you go to John, actually, yeah, go, go to John chapter 10, chapter 10, verse 23. Because the reason why Peter was able to uh, boldly proclaim the gospel here, and the reason why Peter was so quick to respond was because he, had, uh, he, he was able to recognize what, we, what was going on and where he was. Go to John 10 and 23. And it reads, And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. In Solomon's porch. Think about that. Where was Peter at this point, at this time? He was in the same spot. And it was Jesus who went... When he had recognized, it, it, it was Jesus who was on the same porch in the same temple. And when he was surrounded by the Jews being questioned, he then answered and spoke to them. So because Jesus did that already, Peter recognized where he was. He was in the same porch. He was at the same temple. And he had a similar encounter where, where he was surrounded by the people. This is why you have to understand how to take advantage of your moment and opportunities that are right in front of you. You have to. It's like, say you hear from a reliable source that there is a, 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 uh, a well-known company that's hiring, right? You need a job. You know that you need a job, all right? 
and you hear that this company is, is do, are, this company is doing interviews the next day and all they're requiring from you to do is submit your resume on their website online and the first however many people who are in line will have their interview. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to take advantage of that opportunity? Because obviously you need a job and it's right there or are you going to let it pass you by? So you have to learn to, to take advantage. And the best way to do that is to be willing to step out of your comfort zone, which means you don't know where God may desire to place you at any given time. And it's by that and knowing that sometimes God's going to take you out of your comfort zone. He's going to put you in positions where you might meet different people, where you may be networking with individuals that you've never met before, that you've never seen, solely to have an opportunity to share the word of God. Amen? And, and although this is true, that we're going to have challenges. We're going to have difficulty uh, at, at times, difficulties at times. Not taking advantage of opportunity to preach the gospel simply because you're worried about how others will treat you is not a good reason. It's not. And so what Peter and John are able to do here, they're able to recognize and seize their moment. That's why Colossians 4 and 5 say, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. That be wise. Be wise. Basically what that saying is, be able to have a deep understanding and also discernment. Understand where you are. Have a good understanding of who's around you. They always say, when it comes to public speaking, know your audience. You got to know your audience. You got to know your surroundings. You got to know the situation that you're in. You got to have discernment to recognize those moments when it's time to take a stand, when it's time to, to declare God's word, when it's time to minister to that brother or that sister or that coworker or that family member. Amen? Point number two, make sure the spirit of God is in you. Why? Because in, in, the fifth, in the fifth verse of Acts 4, it tells us that on the next day, when Peter and John were called before the ruling council, Peter once again began to preach. How was he able to do this? Simple. He was able to recognize his moment of opportunity. And he, and he seized that moment, and he was able to speak the word. Not only that, if you remember in Matthew chapter 28, let's go there real quickly. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, it, he also remembered the words that Jesus provided. Because remember, Jesus spoke to his disciples, beginning with verse 19, and he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Man, first thing you got to understand is that <laughs> Jesus is with you, number one. So when he tells us to go, make disciples of all nations, when he tells us to go, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and then he tells us that he's with us, that should be enough right there to give us confidence to, be, to, have, to have enough confidence and, and be bold enough to proclaim his word. All right? So back in Acts 4, verse number 8, the Bible describes something here as it pertains to Peter. And the Bible says that he was filled with the Spirit as he boldly declared the name and power of Christ and unashamedly proclaimed Jesus as the only way. He was filled with the Spirit, Spirit of God. And why was he able to do this unashamedly? Well, if you remember in Romans 1.16, the Bible tells us, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God, the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also 
for the Greek. Because remember, it's all about the power of God. And being that Peter was filled with the Spirit, he was tapping into that power. Mm. I have a question for you, and that question is, are you filled with his Spirit? And if so, are you allowing him to have his way in your life? One thing that we need to understand about the Holy Spirit is that the Spirit of God is not a force. Now, I'll be honest with you, I love, I, I love Star Wars. And I know all about the force in Star Wars. That's my movie. And I know I got two or three of you who, you know, likewise, you love the same movie. And so, you know, we're not going to say anything against all the Star Trek fans out there. But one thing we understand and know is that the Holy Spirit is not a force. It is not a force whatsoever. What it is, actually, he's a person. Mm -hmm. We'll say that again. And how do we know this? John 15. Go to John 15, verse 26. The Holy Spirit is a person. And the Word of God says, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Now, let's break this down a bit. But when the helper comes, think about this. Whenever you are requesting help, when you, when, whenever you need help for something specific to help you in need, whether it's, 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 it's physical or, or, or something tangible, you don't call out to an uh, unmovable object or image in order to get that help. No, you call upon a person, a human being, someone to physically help you. That's what you do. So, and not only that, you make sure that when you call upon that person, you call upon them because you know that you can trust them. You can depend on them. And here in verse 26, when the helper comes, whom I shall send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he, there it is, that's what denotes the fact that the Holy Spirit is a person because the Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as a he. He will testify of me. I want to share with you my experience when I receive the Holy Spirit. And I, I remember back in 2002, in the month of January, um, and in December of that that same year, well, I, I received the Holy Spirit in January of, of 2002. And that same year, in December, I discovered my gift. Those who remember my early um, Faith Temple days when I first came, there was a ministry that I uh, stepped into and, 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 and that the Lord led me into, and it was Gospel Mind. Those may know it as, as just miming or or uh, uh, pantomime, uh, but it was considered gospel mime. Uh, mind you, I, I didn't know anything about this ministry. I, I didn't know it existed. I never saw it done before. I, I never heard of it. It was all new to me. And prior to that, I had, uh, I had joined the choir. I, I believe at that point, too, I had became uh, uh, an uh, armor bearer for, for Bishop and, and Elder, uh, and Elder Taubert at that time. Um, and I served those, those areas faithfully, but I allowed the Spirit of God to lead me and guide me. And so going through that period in December, we had our first performance. We had a group called Jam Mind. It consisted of myself and two other, and, and, and two other individuals, Sister Monica Bryan and also Sister Crystal Dawson. And, and uh, man, I, I tell you, what happened that night showed me how, how the power of the Holy Spirit can operate when you allow him to have his way in your life. And the response that, that I saw after the presentation was so amazing. I, 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 it was nothing like it for me, my first experience, because 
I was always a shy person. I never did anything like that in front of everyone. But I'm saying this to say, we rehearsed the routine. But what happened that night, things happened that I didn't even plan for. The way my body was moving, the way, uh, the, 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 the way the Holy Spirit was using my hands and feet and body, the way he was touching this ministry at that time, it did something that showed me how the power of God, when you allow it and you're filled with it, it can take over. And the effects are amazing. And so this is why Peter, back in our text, he says to them, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. His words were mesmerizing to the religious rulers. Why? Because, because they were not used to this powerful form of presentation or preaching. And when they saw the boldness and confidence of Peter and John, they marveled. They was like, what in the world? These men were not educated. I don't want to say that they were dumb or stupid or anything, but they were not educated so to where, to the outsiders, to the, the, the uh, scholars, they didn't, they, they knew that these two men initially were not on their level at all. But after hearing the power and the bonus in which they spoke, it did something to them. This is why in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God says, or the word of God says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Know this, we have, we have a seal of authority. Yes, we do. And we have the ability to be self-disciplined. This is why it is important to make sure you are filled with the Spirit. Because in being filled with the Spirit of God, and automatically you've been given authority. You've been given the power and the ability to spread and declare God's Word. Back in Acts 4, Verse 13, as for the council, we now see here that when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were, as I said, uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Wow. The world needs to see and realize that you and I have been with Jesus. I'm going to say that again. The world needs to realize that you and I have been with Jesus. Why? Because we're the closest thing that they'll ever see. And we need to be bold and confident enough in the Holy Spirit to speak when the opportunity presents itself and let the world know. You gotta be ready. You gotta be ready to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. You gotta have the spirit in the inside of you. And you gotta be ready to let the world know who Christ is, and also God's plan for salvation for their life. Because Christ came to save our souls, and it is our job to make sure the world knows that, to make sure that the world understands that, to make sure that the world receives that message. Nothing's changed. God still has the same agenda. The question is, are you fulfilling that agenda? That's basically it. This is necessary now. We need to let the world know. And we need a spiritual confidence in order to do it. An essential element in God's calling for your life is spiritual confidence. I know natural human logic and self-help books, they tell us to believe in ourselves. They tell us to follow our own instincts and to confide in our own abilities and intellect. However, true satisfaction and success come only through believing in God and confiding in the Spirit's power, just like Peter learned to do. Just like Peter learned to do. Peter learned to seize every opportunity of every moment to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why 
John 15, verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You can't do anything. You can do some things, but you won't be effective. You won't be effective. You may make an impact, you might make some noise, but apart from Christ, if you're not abiding in him, mm -mm, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for. You're not going to get the results that God desires because it's about him getting the glory. We decrease so that he may increase. Joyce Meyer uh, stated this, and I quote, we don't need self-confidence, we need God confidence. Pretty plain and simple. It's good to be self-confident in yourself, but we are fighting a spiritual battle that does not operate with physical weapons, but spiritual. Therefore, we need a God confidence, spiritual confidence. I pray that this blessed you. I pray that uh, you take this simple lesson and apply it to your life. It's, it's really that simple. And the only way you do this is that you have to make sure that number one, number one, that you seize every moment of every opportunity to share the word, but make sure also that you are filled with his spirit because it is his spirit that gives you the power to speak his word boldly and confidently. God bless you. We'll see you uh, next week. Share this with someone. Let someone know how they can be blessed. Until then, stay safe and God bless you.